the pressing question. What is the future for gold, silver, and the precious metal mining stocks? Well, there's a couple significant factors, major stories that we need to dig into, and maybe, just maybe, they will give us some clues, a roadmap as to where we are headed. Let's talk about all that and a lot more right now. Thank you for joining me today in Ron's Basement. You are the most important part of Ron's Basement. So from wherever in the world you are joining me right now, thank you. It's an honor and a privilege that you've decided to spend some of your precious time with me here in the basement. If you enjoy my content, please subscribe to my channel, give the video a thumbs up, turn on the bell notifications. You can share this video anywhere you like. Number one, leave a comment in the comment section below. We want to learn from you, yes, you, and get to know you. Unfortunately, it was another bad week for precious metals. Gold started the week around $1,740 per ounce and ended right around $1,710 per ounce, down 2% for the week, but holding above the critical 1680-1690 support level, gold is still fighting. Go gold. Silver also had a bad week, starting at $18.77 per ounce and dropping to $17.91 per ounce, down a whopping 5%. Not a fun week to hold physical silver third cruddy week in a row. I'm starting to not like the number 17. 1700 for gold and or the $17 range for silver is not where we want to be nor where we expect to be. And later in this video, we're going to talk about some of these factors that are getting in alignment that could be good for the future of the precious metals. The GDXJ, Started the week at $31, dropped to $29.28, down about 7% for the week, if my math is correct, which I believe it is. The GDXJ, it is so important to remember this, is down from $52 in April to below $30 today. It would need to go up darn near 80% from where it is right now just to get back to where it was in April. Hey, from an optimistic perspective, there's a lot of runway ahead for the junior mining gold and silver stocks. Bond yields and the value of the dollar do matter, so we need to take a look at them. The 10-year bond yield was up significantly this week, ending at about 3.2%. That makes the dollar more valuable. The DXY index closed at about 110, near historic highs. The dollar has almost never been this strong in the last 25 years. It can't go much higher. If it does, it's going to cause major, major issues, especially in the developing world. But it's already creating big issues in Europe, in Japan. And it's creating bigger issues for us precious metal owners because a strong dollar and high bond yields is bad news for the precious metals. And good old Bitcoin was down for the week, about 3%, closing at 20000 on Friday. Now, let's move on to some big stories, some big factors that will impact the price of gold, of silver, of the mining stocks, of the general markets as we move into the coming weeks and months. While the week was bad for the precious metals, Friday offered us a glimmer of hope. Both gold and silver had up days and the mining stocks did very, very well. But what's key to look at in that is that the general markets had a very bad day. Now, I don't want to get too optimistic. I've done that a little too often in the past. However, there is a possibility and a strong possibility that maybe people are waking up to this argument that we have stagflation right now. Don't forget, guys, a very similar situation to this unfolded in the 70s and 80s, and gold and silver and the mining stocks did very, very well. 
we tend to be a little bit ahead of the curve, right? I generally have observed that the people that watch my videos are of a little higher intellectual horsepower. So congratulations, number one. But number two, that means we're often early. We often see things before the crowd sees them. And possibly at this point, maybe the crowd is starting to wake up and realize that this environment with high inflation and a recessionary economy, there's not many places to put your money that are looking could, that, that could provide lucrative returns. But one of those big key areas that's been around for thousands and thousands of years is gold and silver. And possibly on Friday, when we have a day when the general markets do bad, but gold and silver do well, that could, that could be the beginning of that trend. You know, my wife calls me repeater Ron. You may start doing that as well. However, I want to repeat this other key important thing, exciting thing for us to remember. The amount of money invested in gold, silver, precious metal mining stocks is a tiny, tiny sliver of the total investable capital available in the world. Rick Rule says 0.5%. With the recent downdraft we've had, it might be more like 0.3% or 0.4%. But nonetheless, when you start from such a small number, if that 0.5% of money of the world invested in the precious metals were to grow to like, let's say 5%. Now that's a lofty expectation. Nonetheless, that would be 10 times the amount of money coming into the sector in such, starting from such a small number, gives the ability for massive, massive compound returns. 0.5 to 5% would be a tenfold increase. Think about that and have a big, big smile on the inside. Another very interesting observation I made this week, and I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on this, but the Fed is coming out with more chest pounding, we're going to be tough bravado than I have ever, ever seen before. And it dawned on me like, are they doing that because that's all they can do? They can't really act big. They can't really raise rates above the inflation rate to really kill inflation. All they can really do is talk big, you know? And are they doing that because they're really, really worried about what's going on with more than just inflation? Just a suspicion or kind of a gut feeling I had as I observed this week, all these Fed governors coming out talking about how hawkish they're going to be and blah, blah, blah. It just, you know, it, it made my antennas pop up. All of this is occurring in the backdrop of the world economies slowing down drastically. The United States, Europe, China, everywhere we look, the major world economies are showing serious, legitimate signs of slowdown. And at the same time, we have a heightened level of geopolitical risk, geopolitical conflict, like we have not seen since World War II. This all spells to me a supportive environment for the price of silver and gold. We may have to wait for a little bit more of the long term than we want. I don't think it's going to turn around next week or maybe even next month. It could, and that would be awesome. However, when we look at the big picture, when we see the forest through the trees, the forest is painted in silver and gold. Hey, thanks for watching my video. If you want to watch another one, you can do that here. If you want to subscribe, you can do that here. Until next time, you be well.